Welcome to the Metal Voice today on the show. Uh, returning guest, Chris and Pelletieri, and oh boy, Rob Rock, first time on the show. What's going on, guys? Good What's morning. Up? Nice to see y'all. War Machine, <laughs> the new album by Impelitary coming out November 8th on Frontiers Music SRL. And I guess, guys, it, you know, I've heard it. I'm pretty blown away by it. I mean, uh, Chris, nice. right off the bat, tell me, what did you do different on this album opposed to the last few albums? In all sincerity, got older, matured. You know, I think on every record, and I can probably say this for Rob as well, you know, as musicians, Rob is a lyricist, whatever, you know, we evolve and we have life experiences which influence the music in some manner. And I think you hear that on this record. You know, for me as a guitar player, and I can't mm -hmm. speak for Rob, but for me as a guitar player, remember, we were down for two years of the pandemic. Yes. And for me, I embrace that time to challenge myself as a musician. I wanted to say, what areas could I improve upon? Where could I, you know, excel? There are certain things I've always loved in classical music, composers like Vivaldi and et cetera, that maybe I could try to master some of those concepts and those techniques. And so I think you hear a lot of that in this record. It's four guys, right, coming together, all for one, one for all. But each of those guys are probably four years older from the previous release. Now, Paul, of course, wasn't on the previous release, but, you know, for James. But he's Ryan still four Rob, years older. He's still four years older. <laughs> 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Rob, uh, what comes first, the lyrical idea, the melody, or the music that inspires all that? Uh, first, it's the music. I think uh, the way me and Chris work is Chris will send me a track. And uh, I'll listen to the track and then and I'll bounce off of that, you know, my own ideas and I'll send him what I think the melody should be with some, you know, some fake words or some words that come off the cuff, you know, So here, man, I'm hearing this, I'm hearing that. And we'll go back and forth until we decide what's the best melody that we're going to use or the best title. And, uh, and that's when we take it from there. All right. And Chris, um, Paul Bostoff, you know, on drums, like we mentioned, you know, he's, he's like the new guy on the album, not necessarily a new uh, a drummer, a seasoned professional. You know, uh, I guess the last band he was in was a Slayer, and he still is, I guess, to a certain degree, right? Tell me about working with him and his drumming on this album. Paul has a unique style. Um, you know, I, I was speaking about this the other day in an interview um, when I really had to think about drummers that we could bring in or approach on this record i was looking for someone that of course could do all of the intricate fills and the fast double bass drumming but i was also hoping we could find someone that had a really heavy feel and what i mean by that is if if you listen to someone a, a, a drummer like john bonham is a great example with led zeppelin listen to stuff like the levy breaks oh yeah bonham i mean just with his drumming alone without the other band members the song was already heavy Right. So we were looking for someone that had that weight and that power. And, you know, I looked at probably four or five guys. I spoke with the band guys as well. And um, I think it was actually Giles. I spoke with Giles Lavery, who I love. And I asked Jay Giles, I said, you know, what do you think about this guy? And Giles was kind enough to reach out to Paul. And Paul was very familiar with him. Pelletarian evidently liked us for some reason. So, you know, before I knew it, we were on the phone and he was in. All right. Uh, some of the lyrical ideas there, uh, Rob, uh, I was just reading about an, an article on Microsoft and how they're going to revamp uh, the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant for, to, for their uh, energy needs for, to power their AI energy needs. Oh, boy. Uh, this, is where the, <laughs> this, this, is, this is the meltdown that almost happened or happened to a certain degree, right, in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about Super Kingdom. <laughs> And what it means to you, because AI seems to be the running theme there. Yeah, it seems to me that AI is kind of, it's taking over all the talking points about the new technology. And all these new companies are, in, you know, using AI to make the future better. So this song is just kind of like a warning that AI is taking over. Whether you like it or not, it's going to take over and affect your life in some way. And... um hopefully it's for the good you know <laughs> we're hoping it's all good but there's been warnings that some of it might be bad 
Rob, I'm, I'm watching the Terminator, and I go, do, have we not learned? Are we not learning? Have we not learned this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the movie's right there, 1983, yeah. 84. I mean, geez, come on. I mean, then there's a whole Man. series of them, and we're like, oh, it's terrible, it's terrible. But are we, are we weak as a race that we need it, – it, it's we need to make the dollar before we need to take care of ourselves as a society. Cause, cause AI is the quick buck. Yeah. Right? This, yeah. It's all, it's all about commercialization of, of everything. I mean, the faster you can make it, not necessarily the better, but the faster that people consume it, the more money they make. And so I think AI has a, it's just a way to shortcut that, to make it quicker and faster. And if we can take our knowledge and apply it that we've learned and then make it faster, you know, kind of take the human element out of it somehow, you know, skip that step where people are involved and just say, okay, here's information and make the information do the work instead of the humans. I think that's, I think that's the dark area that they're talking about where it could be taken for good or for bad because the machine's only going to know what the programmer puts in it. Yeah. It's not going to have a conscience. It's not going to have, common sense it's not you know well maybe i think they're working on that actually <laughs> trying to develop some kind of learning you know pattern so like i said we're slaves to it this the, the super kingdom is coming and it's uh run by ai and hang on to your seat here it comes brace for impact <laughs> chris have you used ai <laughs> turn back there you go yeah <laughs> chris have you used ai <laughs> in any way or form musically on this album no no um no you know, it's interesting. So there are pros and cons to artificial intelligence. So mm -hmm. the cons and the fear is that man versus machine, ultimately man loses, right? Machine is obviously smarter, can process information much quicker than a human being mathematically. However, think about in the field of medicine. Think about how surgeries are done today. Robotic, there's no longer invasive surgery. A lot of it is very uninvasive because of that technology. And if you had artificial intelligence going into you and detecting, oh, cancer or heart valve or whatever, you know, and it can go in there and fix it where you're leaving the hospital the same day, <laughs> right? That to me, I think is the brilliant use of artificial intelligence and how we should embrace it. As an artist, it gets a little weird, right? Because look, we've been dealing with, I mean, there's so many different software algorithms, pitch correction, for example. Now, thank God, Rob Rock can sing perfectly, but you know you have a lot of singers out there in the pop world and in the whole entire sphere that really can't sing. But you put them through those algorithms and they come out sounding like a, a diamond, right? So that's false. That's not, I don't enjoy that because music is really about self-expression, right? With us, it's four or five individuals expressing ourselves emotionally and coming together and working as a team and as a unit. Versus if a machine was doing it, it could still do it and probably do it just as well, maybe even better, but it would be very sterile and cold and there's no soul to it. What, what about uh, inspiration for creativity? Like, you know, I'm, I got a roadblock here on this musical passage. Maybe I could let lean on AI to sort of get me out of this spot. There you go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> you know, I've been, you know, as, as a lyricist, there's always, uh, I remember back in the 80s when, you know, me and Chris were working on the Black EP and songs like that. I would go through uh, TV guides back then. They had TV guides and stuff that had movie titles and stuff. Oh, yeah. And I remember looking through the movie titles and thinking, oh, that's a cool line or that's a cool title. And then working from there, you know, and I know they have like, the sources where I, if I get stuck on a word, I want to say, I want to explain something, but it doesn't quite rhyme or have the rhythmic value I need. And I can go to a thesaurus and get another idea, which I don't usually use the thesaurus idea. It usually sparks a third idea Yeah, yeah from yeah. that, you know? So it, I kind of use, I, you know, if that's, well, that's probably old school AI. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it, it I, is. I haven't looked into the new stuff. I'm sure they've, I'm sure now they have all kinds of writing tools for AI. Oh, absolutely. I want to talk about UFOs now, gone insane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chris, I mean, whose idea was this? Was this a th thesaurus or this was a TV guide? I mean, is this really a real alien meeting? Uh, what are we talking about here, guys? Any of, any of you can answer this. This. Is, this, is, uh, this is Rob Rock watching Netflix too much. 
Oh, are, are we talking about the blinding of the light on Damas the road to Damascus? Are we talking about you know a real alien coming out of the sky? Well, we well that's that's the that's the whole piece. Of it. It's like a double meaning. If you if you're looking for uh, the blinding light and you believe in that, that's what you're going to see. Other people, like the shows on Netflix that, that I've watched, they, they've seen some the standard, you know. Uh, you know disc in the sky with the lights shining down and all this stuff so the song is questioning have i gone insane do i really do i believe what i see or am i or am i seeing what i believe so that that's where that whole you know perspective is coming from and i just want to say that rob your voice is phenomenal on this album and i'm sure chris can, can oh, agree with you. that and i mean uh, boy you're putting the young guys to shame you know old school power metal singing incredible yeah. incredible chris will we ever see a north well, american thank you. I tour that. you bet chris will ever will we ever see a north american tour of impelitary <laughs> you know when you're gonna have a tour on your retirement tour this is our last <laughs> tour that's <laughs> we can't retire <laughs> how can we retire we never began <laughs> 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 our first yeah. and last I know it's like I love Japan and I love Asia, but boy, we got we got to we got to get some other countries on this. Um, you know, Jimmy, look, I'm always trying, and 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 I'm being blatantly honest. I've told you this in the past. The biggest problem we have is, you know, we'll reach out a lot of times to the promoters or the agents. Now, I, I should back up for a sec. I did just sign with an agent in Europe, and this agent's worked with a lot okay. of big bands. This is the first. So we now have an agent for Europe that's working on getting us on all the big festivals and doing a full tour. And in America, the problem is always the same. You know, what we get, and it's flattering, a lot of times the agents will respond and go, oh, man, we really love this band. It's great. But you have no history. You have no track record. If we try to bring you in a place that let's, it, it could be arbitrary number. It could be 3,000 people. It could be three people. They don't know that we're going to put any bodies in that, that venue, Right and it's a risk for them and so we always run up against this brick wall of how do we reach the people that embrace impelitary the fans that want to see this band right of course now we could do it but we would also probably go broke doing it right i mean we had an offer i think it was about five or six years ago with a very questionable agent who wanted us to do a u.s tour and i did the math and i'm not kidding by the time you know if we if we were fortunate enough where we had a bus and we had a crew and we had everything I figured out by the end of each month, I'd probably lose about $50,000. So think about it. If you were out there for four months doing yeah. that, you know, with hotels, crew, you know, doing it where people aren't sleeping on a van floor, right? It'd be about $200,000 I'd have to write a check for. You know, that's not fun. No, especially so, since we're getting older, it's not easy either, right? Uh, it's, it's but, but we, yeah, but we need to. So for God's sakes, Iron Maiden, take out Impelitary or Metallica. A, there you go. Bring right us there. out. That's it. <laughs> that's what you need that's what you need. rob um in the lyrics i just just I, oh the political turmoil in the u.s and i'm not going to get i don't mean to get specific or anything how much of that this polarization this division this everybody against each other how much is, did that play a role in your lyrics on this album and i don't and you don't have to get specific just in general you know, yeah. i don't want to get anybody in trouble. Um, i don't you know we're surrounded by it through the media every day, man, back and forth, back and forth, this side, that size. And there's so much lies and deception everywhere that you really don't know who to trust, who to think, you know, and it comes down to your own, your own, I guess, feelings and what you believe, I guess. But there, that in the background of this album, I, there's a, there's, there's a reason why uh, we call it war machine. It's because several songs deal with war <clears throat> in a different way, you know, and War Machine, like the song itself, War Machine, is about, you know, the profiteering of of war and how people in countries and governments gain gain power, gain land and prestige from the wars. So there's different reasons there. And then we got a power grab, which could be yeah. it's another another side that, that has a lot to do in the back of my mind anyway with you know, the Russian and Ukrainian more going on. And we got a new single, Hell on Earth, which is considers the other war that's going on right now, you know, over there in the Middle East. So 
So that's why, you know, War on Earth, I mean, War on Earth, War on, <laughs> the War Machine is actually, uh, I think, a good uh, underlying sub subplot to this album. And it, of course, it fits the music because the music is just hammering it. And Chris, Chris has got some super heavy riffs on this album. So I think it's all fits together really good. You know, Chris, just like uh, Rob's voice is, you know, at his peak, in a sense, I think you're playing and you're shredding. It's at its peak. I don't know, man. I, I, do you have to like grease your hands before you actually play so they move quicker? It's incredible, and you play with such melody too. You, and I and I noticed the neoclassical you're referring to was on Rothschild. I think that midsection. I'm not sure if it's Vivaldi. I'm not sure where you got that from. Tell me a little bit about that on Rothschild. Well, it is. I mean, it's a very orchestrated solo and it moves a lot. You know, it starts in minor, then has some beautiful um, major arpeggiating. And, you know, for me, it, and by the way, thank you for saying that. I, I'm very humbled when people like my guitar playing. You know, it's interesting. I always get compared with the Shredders. I get it, the Ingves and the Paul Gilberts and all that. But, you know, truthfully, and I pray to God people that are watching this hear this once and for all. You know, this band has never been about me. It's never been, I don't want to use other guitar players as an example, but it's never been the Chris and Pelletier ego instrumental guitar show. It's never been that. It's been about four or five individuals unite, right? One for all, all for one, making this music. And the playing is really, at least my part of this, is just my self-expression. And I'm humbled that you said that about my guitar playing, because believe me, I practice every day. I realize that, oh, I could do it way better. And believe me, there are some times where I look back at stuff and I, I'm aware. I go, oh, that was really great. But there are plenty of stuff out there that I go, oh, my God, you suck. <laughs> right? Like my critics. And so to earn that respect from myself and from them, I constantly practice. I know I can be better. And maybe that's what you're hearing on this record is me making a concerted effort to be the best I can. Same thing with Rob. You know, we're not let rest. And maybe this is a good thing because we've never really made it, at least globally. Right. Because of that hunger, we're always trying to prove ourselves. Right. Versus if we were coming yeah. off like appetite for destruction. I'm, <laughs> I, I like, love that. You know what I mean? But you know a good I mean? point. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> they need to be sitting back saying, I don't want to talk to Jimmy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you know, yeah, but, but, but when, when I first saw music. when I first saw that song Rothschild, I go, "What are they doing? A maiden cover? Rob, what was going through your mind?" <laughs> hey, hey, let, can, hey, let me jump in there for a second. Cool. This is not Rob's fault. This is actually my fault because I I gave him that lyric. So actually, you know where you say Rothschild, and it's funny the way you pronounce it is almost actually originally what it was going to be. Originally, it was about Rothschild, and when I kind of said, "Hey, Rob, I have this idea," what I thought of is, you know, in a capitalistic society. We're really driven, unfortunately, by greed. We want more, 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 more. And I think we have this misconception, if you have a ton of money, then you have power. And with power, you have influence. And, and to a, a lesser degree, that's true. And so I had this vision when I was writing, it, believe it or not, about this child obsessed as he evolved in life with acquiring wealth and mm -hmm. fortune and power so he could rule the world but then inevitably finding out that it's a shallow grave you're digging, right? There's going to be no self-fulfillment. At the end, it ends badly for you. And at that point, something magical happens. And all of a sudden, this child is able to put the wrath upon those forces, greed, right? Power, manipulation, whatever. And I thought, oh, that's cool. It's the wrath of this child back on those forces of capitalism. So I said, oh, that'd be great. But I was like, also, you can't call it wrath child. It's a maiden song. <laughs> right so <laughs> i knew that but i remember telling rob I said, maybe we should change it to rothschild right because like you know the the vanderbilt's um carnegie's roths rothschild whatever i thought that'd be cool but then i thought you know screw that let's call it rothschild because also i'm a huge fan of maiden and i think in a some way in a weird chris way i think it's an ultimate kind of like homage or tribute sam we love yeah. maiden so yeah, it's I, true. I, I, i'm gonna tell both of you right now Unless somebody could tell me otherwise, I don't think the word Rothschild as one word has existed since before 1977. And I think it was Maiden who sort of coined it. Mm. I, 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 I Find yeah. me the word in the dictionary. I have yet to find it. but I, maybe... haven't, I haven't either. But that's also why Rath 
child are two separate words. Yes. But make no bones about it. When it was time to change the title, and obviously he's Rothschild, I went, dude, no, let's keep it. Let's. I think it's really cool kind of tipping our hat I, I, to make I, I, Absolutely. And there was also a little more history. There was two bands, Rothschild UK and Rothschild US, that oh, had wow. that name. And they were arguing that they were they predated Maiden in that coining that term. So Interesting. Now, yeah. here's the best part. You want to hear this, Chris? Mm-hmm. When in 1977, mm -hmm. there's a reel to reel of Iron Maiden, and guess how they wrote the original song? I don't know. Rothschild. You're kidding me. Seriously? Kidding you. you look it up. Look it up. I have a picture <laughs> of it. It's on the internet. It's, it was called Rothschild. Now, was Steve Harris thinking what you were thinking? Maybe I'll base it, because if you read the lyrics, maybe I'll base it on some sort of pushback on greed and a kid who grows up a certain way. Or... Did they just misspell it? <laughs> I don't think they misspelled it, but that's it's it's crazy to hear that. Seriously, I'll send you the you picture know. later. I didn't know that story. Later. So it was what did it, was it a demo before they did the actual? It was record? a reel to reel demo, and the drummer Thunderstick at the time of Maiden. This is before they signed in 1977. Yeah. He wrote it down as Rothschild, Rothschild, like wow. the Rothschilds. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's kind yeah. of like the powerful money people in capitalism, like you mentioned. But then the they change it to Rothschild. Maybe yeah. they thought they'd get in trouble in the UK. I don't know. Rob, what were you thinking when you wrote Rothschild? I was just thinking that here's a kid growing up with all this wealth, but yet he's getting he's getting pushback from, from all the powers that be. And so he's fighting back against injustice, you know. It's just uh it's just about money and power and corruption and, and fighting for yourself, you know. Okay. Were I think you everybody runs into that pushback. Were, were you a fan of Maiden growing up? Iron Maiden. I was. A, I was a fan of of everything metal growing up. Yeah, and Maiden. I think uh, the live album was the my first introduction to Maiden, and of course MTV came around, and and you, then you saw it at Maiden everywhere. But but yeah, definitely Maiden's definitely one of my favorites. What about you, uh, Chris? Uh, the death of Paul Diano, their their original first singer. You know, thanks for bringing that up. Actually, that was a sensitive subject because we had already had um, right. our that version of this Rothschild music video scheduled already with the label. We had no idea what was happening to Paul. And and actually, in some ways, you know, when it came out, there was an interview I just did, and I was like, you know, it made me reflect on his time with Maiden and what a, a huge contribution to metal. I mean, if you listen to that early Maiden with Diano. It's just, it's magical. Now, yes, I think Bruce is the right step to evolve the band, mainly because, you know, Paul had this amazing voice, but there was probably some limitation in range where Bruce was able to go to that next step. But, you know, you can't discredit what Paul did for that band. I don't think Maiden would be here today without him. Okay, cool. Uh, Rob, uh, you know, probably you've been asked this a thousand times, yep. but I'll ask it again. The double meanings with, you know, you you, you kind of put in the Christian sort of in the background, those meanings versus, you know, real life situations. Are, you know, is, is there a lot of purposely done Christian messages there for everyone? Yeah, there's, there is a lot of double meaning that that's there. It's not uh, it's not so blatant as to be on a Christian uh, for Christians type. We try to reach you know reach the masses so i write in a way that if you're not a christian and you're you're listening to the song that you can apply it to your life and get something from it as opposed to if it was so blatant and in your face you'd only have one way to to interpret it you know what i mean so if you are a christian and you know that i'm a christian you can say oh i know where he's coming from from that angle so it's kind of like my christian viewpoint on the world but the world can can interpret it the way the world sees it as well. Yeah, you did a fine job. It's not obvious. It's more in the background, which is better that way, right? So everybody can relate to it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think, you know, for what one in Pelletary is and has been since 1987 or 85 or whenever me and Chris started up, you know, that's what we we wanted to do. We wanted to reach as many people as we possibly could. So there's no Scientology. There's no Scientology there. No, no. Just no. a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't mean to insult John yeah. Travolta or anything, but Yeah, Tommy Cruz, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Chris, 
on the last question, what do you want to tell everybody out there about this new album? Well, I hope everybody has a chance to, at the very least, listen to it one time through. Okay. You know, I mean, we made this record for ourselves, but as much as we do it for ourselves, I'd be lying to say that we're not trying to impress people, to touch their their lives with our music. So, you know, I hope everybody gets a chance to listen to this record with an open mind. Um, I think it's it's probably the best record we've ever done. Um, I know artists say that it's a very dangerous statement this, to make because of the replication of other people, but the reality is it's true, and we're hearing that from a lot of the critics and people that have heard advanced copies of it. Um, and the band, I think right now, we're firing on all, is it called all four cylinders, 12 cylinders, whatever? Firing on all <laughs> cylinders. We're, we're probably Depending on how many eight. cylinders you have, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> We're, I think, I think we're, we're at the top of our game right now. I think I, Rob I is singing better than he's ever sung. And he was always great, but I think he just hit that. If yeah. you ask me, and I know some people will take offense to this, but whatever, but I think Rob right now easily, easily rivals Dickinson, Dio, Halford easily with what he's doing with his voice now. Um, you know, and we're, we're, we're pushing ourselves, you know, because we love playing and making music. And so that's what we're sharing with everybody is this love for heavy metal and love for this type of music. So, well, I agree with you. I think this, the production is, 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 is fantastic. It's crisp. It's nice. It's big. Your guitar playing is super melodic. The, the backbone is, is solid. And Rob is, he's, he's just at, at, at his peak. Rob closing remarks. Well, I just want to thank the fans for being with us all these years. I mean, we've put out a lot of albums together and we're still going and we still want to play live for everybody. So I want everyone to check out the new album, not, not just fade away on another album and ignore it, grab onto it and check out Chris's playing on it. I think it's fantastic. I think the drumming and bass playing is fantastic singer. Ah, he's all right, but yeah, the songs <laughs> are good too. So I think, uh, I don't know. I think everyone will be you know into it, man. And like the song out of my mind, that's about, you know, the heavy metal culture of just loving rock and roll, loving the metal. That's what this solo album is about. Just We just love what we do, and we're, we're glad that we can continue to do it. You know, a lot of bands, you know, they do two or three albums, and that's it. But we've been doing 10, 12, 14 albums. We're, we're still going, you know. So we thank the fans for that, and we appreciate it. All right. War Machine is going to be released very soon, November 8, on Frontiers Music SRL. Guys, thank you so much. Have yourself a wonderful day, and I wish you all the success. Thank you, Jimmy. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs>